maturities change in a different uh, manner how do i uh, pro probably hedge my portfolio because uh, uh, there is a good chance that uh, duration based hedging may or may not be effective in that case because in the duration even uh, even in the current calculations or what wherever we have done the duration calculation just now what we have looked at is if the interest rate changes by some percentage what is the impact on the price of the bond so for the whole bond we have taken one single change in the interest rate whereas in reality it may so happen that for a different periods the interest rates could change differently or could react differently so the interest rates may not be having a parallel shift and that is where the multi factor model is uh, coming into picture because most of the single factor duration or convexity based model which we have worked on for hedging the portfolio it is very effective when the interest rates shift in a parallel fashion but when they shift in a non parallel fashion especially when the short term rates are more or long term rates are uh, changing lesser any of those uh, non parallel shifts kind of mechanism the hedging is not that effective using a plain duration or convexity kind of stuff and that is where we are talking about the interest rates multiple changes in the interest rates for multiple uh maturity periods that is where we are using a mechanisms like key rate based approach and bucket based uh, approach we'll see uh, those two approaches when we are talking about uh, the key rate exposure all we are talking of is along the term structure we will find out the risks not as a combo for all the maturity duration was doing actually a combo for the entire maturity whereas uh, in this approach along the term structure we will identify the risk okay from probably uh, for a 2 year maturity what is the risk what is the duration for a 5 year maturity what is the duration for a 10 year maturity what is the duration and after that we will combine all of them uh, to to find out the overall duration or overall convexity of the portfolio that is where we are bringing in the scenario of uh, key rate which means the the initial duration was primarily based on ytm the actual effective duration or whatever we have computed was primarily based on ytm here it is based on spot rates here we are trying to find out the durations based on the spot rate not based on the ytm that's the major difference right if i am finding out that you which means if the two year interest rate is changing what would be and assume that the five year 10 year 8 year no interest rates are changing only the two year interest rate is changing what could be the impact on the price of the bond so i am not looking at the entire ytm changing by 5.5 percent here i am only looking at only a two year spot rate changing by 0.5% and no other spot rate changing at all whatever is the change in the price of the bond that is coming up which means actually speaking i will not discount to put it in simple terms i will uh, if, if at all these are my cash flows probably only this one i will change right only probably uh, let's say uh, initially these are 7.58 let's say these are the percentages associated here now what i am saying is keeping all these interest rates constant only the two year interest rate changing from 8% okay let me take this number uh, here 94.83 now only if this rate is changed and no other rates are changed the change in the price of the bond 94.77 from 94 point something earlier now it has become 94.77 that is what i am calling as a duration associated 
only with the two year. So that is what I am calling as a key rate duration for that. And if I am finding out the DV01 associated with that, I call it as a key rate 01. The same equivalent of DV01. When I take it to the spot rate terminology, I am calling it as key rate 01. The duration, if I am carrying it on to this uh, spot rate terminology, I am calling it as a key rate duration. And similarly, so for that, even for the computation of the spot rates, we were talking about the using treasury securities only, that to on the run treasury securities, which are more like very recently issued and very actively traded kind of securities. From those securities prices, we will derive the spot rates. Even for deriving of our spot rates, we have used the similar mechanism. And those spot rates, if I am varying by uh, one basis point and finding out what is the change in the uh, what is the change in the price, I am calling it as key rate zero one. If I am finding out the duration associated with just changing only the two year spot rate and not the other rates i am calling it as uh, the key rate duration only that one key rate which is a two percent i mean two year maturity rate only is changing what is the duration that is corresponding only to that change that is what we are calling as the key rate zero one and there is a parallel, another name called partial zero ones in this context. Instead of spot rates, if I use the swap rates, I am calling it as partial zero one. The same as your key rate zero one and key rate duration. If I am finding out uh, the change in the price based on the swap rates and not the treasury bond rates. See, the treasury bond, based on the treasury securities, if I am deriving the rates, I am calling as spot rates. Based on the swap transactions, if I am deriving the rates, I am calling them as the swap rates. And uh, that swap transactions, based on the riskiness that could be associated between the parties, the swap rates could differ. So, when I am taking my uh, each year interest rate based on the swap rate, we are calling as partial 01. When I am doing the same thing with respect to the treasury rates, we are calling as key rate 01 kind of exposure. So, these are the three various uh, securities which are typically uh, used. When YTM is used, we are calling as one factor model, which is a duration and uh, DV01. When I am using the spot rates or the treasury bonds, Treasury securities from where the spot rates are derived, we are calling it as key rate duration and key rate 01. When we are using swap rates or the swap transactions for different maturities and then arriving at uh, 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 arriving at uh, kind of a zero coupon bond rates, we are calling them as uh, swap rates. And that swap rate where the association is partial 01 kind of stuff. And another mechanism is forward bucket 01. Forward bucket is nothing but based on the yield curve. Okay, between 0 to 1 year maturity, this is the interest rate. Be, uh, so the forward rate between 1 and 2 years is 9%. Between 2 and 3 years is 9.5%. We Based on the... Uh, spot rate curve, we can get a forward rate curve and that forward rate curve when I am using I am calling that I am calling uh, that kind of a, uh, exposure as forward bucket 01. For the entire maturities between 1 and 2 years, if I am using that forward rate for all the maturities between 1 and 2 years, if I am using uh, the forward rate as the discounting factor, I am calling it uh, as a forward bucket 01 kind of mechanism. It's nothing but all these are actually breaking down my whole bond portfolio into various maturities so that I will find the duration of.